Ani Bojo, hello. Nazar Nagwe of Kwayan Dishnikaz. My spirit name is Healing Rainbow Woman. Nayashing Agamig and Dunjava. I'm from Cape Croker First Nation, Eji Dakdodem. I'm from the Crane Clan, and I welcome you here tonight. It's such a gift to be here, and I wanted to start our evening off with a land acknowledgement. And the way that I like to do land acknowledgements is um, I like to just feel it in our body so that it's not just words that we're speaking. We're actually um, feeling the land, the spirit of the land, and all that the spirit of the land holds beneath our feet. So I'll get us to just begin by taking a breath. My name is Asha, my given name is Asha, and I am Anishinaabe. I am living on the lands of the Anishinaabe here in Wendat and Haudenosaunee peoples. So as you take that breath, maybe feel that breath moving down to the soles of your feet. And just feel the soles of your feet tonight. And just envisioning the land that is beneath the soles of your feet. Maybe you're up a couple floors, but just breathing in and feeling that energy moving down until you acknowledge the land that is beneath you. And we're going to acknowledge that this land has seen and heard so much. The spirit of this land holds so much. And we're going to acknowledge that the people of this land aren't just from the past. We are still here. And we're going to acknowledge all the kin of creation on this land. The plants, the trees, the animals, the wind, the waters. Just taking a moment with gratitude. Acknowledging your personal connection to what lands you are currently seated and standing upon. And if you know that, if you just want to, in your own space, just speak that out loud. And then acknowledging your own roots, your own ancestors and your own medicine for you bring that here with you tonight. And we acknowledge that and we see that. I like to imagine we're seated in circle for that's where I do a lot of my work in circle. And I love how tonight is about, is about love, healing through love and connecting to love because we are connected. Actually, it's a beautiful night of a full moon. And I was in um, a lot of ceremony today with strawberries. So I wanted to bring the blessing forward tonight just quickly with um, the strawberry medicine. We call the strawberry the Ode Min. Ode means heart in Ojibwe. Ode Min, the heart berry. So I wanted to bring the energy and medicine of the heart berry into this space as we come into our heart center, as we connect to how our hearts are calling us forward. And the teaching of this month is how we're moving love into action, which I think is an important thing, how we're walking it on the land that we are on right now. So how are you moving love into action with Odeyamin, with the heart berry? And maybe we'll just take a moment to acknowledge that heart berry. And if you have a strawberry close by tonight or tomorrow, just thinking about that. How am I moving love into action? And I'll just complete this with a little bit of some smoke medicine. I have some sage here. Just honoring that, honoring the land, and honoring our hearts. Kiju Manado, great creator. To the Eagle of the East Megizi, we welcome you into this space to bring your golden light and your vision. We thank you for your presence, Miigwech, Miigwech. To the Deer of the South, Wawash Keshe, thank you for moving your compassion, your heart, and your love into this space. We thank you, Miigwech, Miigwech. Mashko de Bijike, to the Buffalo of the West, thank you for bringing your presence, your abundance, your surrender. Miigwech, Miigwech. To the Bear of the North, Makwa, Thank you for holding this space with your boundaries, for reminding us that rest is medicine. Miigwech, miigwech. Chicago McQuay, Mother Earth rising up through our feet, Father Sky, the sun, grandfather, grandmother, the moon, and all the ancestors, no commis me show miss. And just bringing yourself into your center, into that heart, into that brilliant medicine that you carry. And just thanking yourself for showing up tonight. And I thank you, spirit to spirit, heart to heart. Miigwech, miigwech. Good evening, for me at least. Some of you will be a different time. Welcome to HEAL, helping each other accept love is the 
title, the orientation we're taking here together, being moved by, led by a song, Gentleman by Sauron Song. We'll be listening to that song and speaking to him a little bit in a moment. And the spirit, the energy and tension of intersectionality. It's an intersectional panel uh, on mythology, maturity, and masculinity. I like saying those words and thank you, Soren and Jordan for constructing, organizing, putting a focus to what we're doing here and inviting me to moderate. My name is David Bedrick. I'll be moderating tonight. I am the founder of the Santa Fe Institute for Shame-Based Studies, where we teach uh, healers and therapists and coaches about trauma and soma and how to work with people in a, in a deep way, in a depth way. Um, I'm thinking, because I want to keep this short, and there's so many things I want to say, but I want to keep us focused on the agenda and the heart of what we're here to do. Um, I've written three books. My most recent book is called You Can't Judge a Body by Its Cover. And it's about shame and body shame, especially in women and, um, and trauma and the stories around that. So I've been a therapist for some like 30 years and study process-oriented psychology. But that's not all that moves me. That's my credential, people would call those. But that my deeper credential for being involved in this topic, one, I'm a man-oriented person. That means most of the time I walk around in a male body and experience that inside and outside in the world, way the world treats me. That's what I mean by that. We all know that gender is a complex experience. So just to say it, frame it that way. I grew up though in a violent home. I had a father who used belts and fists to express himself. And um, I had a mother who I would call disempowered. And what that meant to me most importantly is she could not see. She had to deny, dismiss and blame rather than say, I see what's happening in the family. That's very important to my thinking and my feeling. Both of those events, the patriarch in this case in my family who expressed himself in violence and the witness that wouldn't have to be a mother it wouldn't have to be a father who used that violence, but the witness, the one who sees or doesn't see, and the impact that witness has on the person who's hurt, or the group that's hurt, or the culture that's hurt, or the nation that's hurt, or the earth or planet that's hurt. I bring also to bear a Jewish history, and that's part of also my connection to the territory of trauma, intergenerational trauma, and how that lives in my bones and blood informs the way I think and move and listen to other people and what I offer. So we're gathering here today, tonight. Um, there are five panelists, I guess four, uh, not including uh, Soren. Am I getting that right? And uh, I'm calling them wise men and wise women of heart, mind, and efforts that have made a difference in the world around violence and trauma. And our focus tonight is on the trauma that men suffer and therefore boys must suffer because that's part of the ideology for many men is their boyhood. It wouldn't have to be, but for many it is. The inspiration for tonight is a song written by Soren Song and it's called Gentle Man. It's a gift of music that he gives to us that orients us and in the spirit behind that music and his songwriting and that particular song is in the feeling tone of what we're trying to do. So I wanted to say thank you for the invitation to moderate uh, to Soren and Jordan and to the intention, the intersectional intention and the focus on, on um, men and their particular trauma. So we're gonna be talking about things like what trauma is, what does healing look like and how can we shape our awareness, our interventions, our hearts, our conversation, influenced by, informed by the male experience, the masculine experience, men's experience, 
It's very important for me to say as a man, there's in no way an attempt to marginalize women's voices and experience. That's not what this is about. In fact, I, and I know the people here well enough to know that there's ample focus, probably more focus on women's experience and gratitude for the number of women who've brought the issues of trauma into the light so much. So a thank you to that and to those women and to that story and to women who suffered and learned and became wise and educated me and others. And it's important to make a focus that does put men in the spotlight, in the middle, in the center for a moment, not as an exclusion, not during a Me Too moment where we say men should be talking also, where that marginalizes then yet another voice, witnesses women's violence and suffering and trauma by pushing it aside, but by making a sacred space for that. And that's what our intention is tonight. So we're gonna start off by talking to Soren for a moment about his song, Gentleman. Soren, how are you doing, brothers? Good to see you. I'm okay. How are you, Dad? <clears throat> Thank I'm you. Doing well. Much. I'm feeling passionate all of a sudden, so that must mean the oh, spirit yeah. is yeah. for that is here. Soren, let me ask you. I listened to the song quite a number of times. It always draws tears and the shivers that mean my soul is touched. What moved you to write the song and share your own story and feelings about trauma? Um, you know, that's a, it's an interesting question. I, I don't know what moves me to do it. It's just something I've always done. Um, mm. You know, when I, when I create, when I write music, uh, it just comes, I don't know what the words are gonna be. I don't know what the melody is gonna be. Mm. And, and a lot of times I really, I just kind of mumble sounds and then they turn into words and they make sense. And that's still kind of shocking and magical to me, but there's never really much of an intention. This one, there was a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I went outside, I'd written the whole first part of it and didn't have the ending. And I went outside and my dog was running um, just along a line of shadow on the, on the bright sunny side of it. And I was thinking, oh, don't go into the dark side, don't go into the shadow. And, and, and she was just going right along it. And finally, she just went right over into the dark side and laid down. And I was like, oh, what if the shadow is the shade? And that was exactly what she needed. And that was kind of the impetus of, you know, this whole album is me walking directly into my darkness mm. and shining a light and seeing what's there and trying to be honest about it, mm -hmm. um, trying to go into, you know, my own core beliefs in mythology and see where things, where it's not telling a good story um, and try to be honest about that and then try yeah. to tell, you know, imagine a better story, so. Yeah, thank you for that, thanks. And thank your dog. <laughs> um, being public about one's experience, doing it musically for you or poetically or, storytelling without the music. That's something that takes a spirit, a will, a courage for some people. What's it like for you to say, I'm going to be public about my story. I want to sing to the world a message. Um, singing it is really easy. I've been doing it a long time. Sitting here talking to you, is, is that's the hard part for me. That's the part that's uncomfortable is, you know, um, answering the questions about what the song is about, which for me, I think per my personal story, I think the song says enough about it and, and it, yeah. it can be, there's enough universal truths in there mm -hmm. to kind of tell a bigger story about um, mm -hmm. our mythology as a culture, which is similar. I think, you know, the mythology I was raised in is the prevailing mythology of this culture. It's patriarchal, it's, it's steeped in white supremacy, it's steeped in a stolen religion. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and someone who they have made out to be this person that they never were. Mm -hmm. and, and there's just a lot of things I was raised with, with this being normalized, that what you see in the world and what you're told are two different things and you should believe what you're told. Yeah. And that did a ton mm -hmm. of damage for me. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and now I think 
hearing other voices, hearing other stories. I was raised not to listen to other stories and not to hear other voices. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the people who traumatized me seem to have traumatized just about everybody. And so I was able to hear other voices because I said, oh, yeah, that's the same bad guys yeah. as in my story. Yeah. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. so I am grateful for that. It doesn't justify, mm -hmm. you know, the things. Can I ask you? A, I'm sorry. I'm, sure, go ahead. Sometimes I, I jump in too quickly. Oh. If I do, just give me a little little smack. I'm a New Yorker. And I, I'm, I'm used to oh, people yeah. throwing things at me as long as they're not too ill-willed. But can I ask you an intimate Question. I'm saying, can I? But now I'm already putting you on the spot. So, yeah, a hand on a chest is a good, and, and stroking a beard is a good way. No, 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 I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. No, go for it. Uh -huh. yeah, but you said at the no. beginning yeah. when I asked, you said, doing it musically is easy. Uh -huh. And then you said, but sitting in front of you, I'm not going to get your words at the moment, that brings up a different experience. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If that experience, that awkwardness or anxiety or whatever you would call that in words, if that could speak out loud and say something to us, because I think we all have that moment. That's why I'm asking you, it's not just you. It's an experience that might inform the people listening. This is what I go through. This is why I don't speak. Yeah. Can I ask you, what, what does your uncomfort or awkwardness, what would it say to us? Well, you know, I think when I sing, it's a controlled thing. Uh, to a degree at least um, yeah. and because of my trauma I think people who have experienced great trauma especially at a young age when we go into our trauma sometimes we act in a way that people would find peculiar yeah. and so my fear is if I were to step into my trauma right now I might Thank say you. or do some things that would be you know embarrassing to another part of me that I'm trying to learn not to listen yeah. to yeah um Thanks. and also there's still a lot of kind of you know there's a lot of fear there's a lot of fear um in uh just being open and, and public about the experiences that i had the trauma the yeah. um that you know i need to check like how i need to check in with that vulnerable part of myself to make yeah. sure that part feels safe enough to to say what it wants to say yeah. um, there's another part of me that loves to just run with it and say everything and mm -hmm. uh isn't mindful of that more vulnerable part of myself mm -hmm. which is why um mm -hmm. i found these incredible people to mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. you know i want to hear their voices i want to amplify their voices Thanks. and hear what you know mm -hmm. I, I i you know my mythology and i think in our culture the mythology around masculinity is just there, there's some really damaging stories and they didn't just damage me as a as someone who grew up and presented as a male um they damaged all of us they damaged women yeah. oh my goodness that people of color everything um through the, through this you know my trauma happens to be at the hands of the people who have been in control and in charge and yeah. in trauma on Mm -hmm. all of us and they also have their own trauma and we can't heal by fighting them or yelling at them either mm -hmm. so like how do we move forward how do we heal yeah. how do we bring people to the table that don't yeah. want to be there yeah. um those are the things that interest me and these are people i find interesting so i want to hear about yeah. that part of it i think is what you're doing which is to say here i am in this case a male person standing here saying i'm going to bring my voice my gift and creativity of music my intelligence about something and my vulnerability because that that's part of the strength a new strength you could say a new myth a new male myth it says mm -hmm. i'm strong by being insecure in front of other people publicly as opposed to being i'm i got it all together i've cleaned it up i'm awkward with you my hair and my arms are standing up my head's pound my heart's going boom 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 all those kinds of things and i think some part says Get it together before that you get together with this group, David, so you can moderate. And another voice says, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't leave. Arrive. That's the point. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping we show. We can model intellectually and musically and in our feeling bodies. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the intention. And I think that you were very helpful now when I spoke to you, is just giving me permission to show up tonight as whoever showed up 
and yeah. however I showed up and just saying like this is you know my story part of it I've got thick curly hair and a personality that you never know from day to day what, what you're going to get I don't know who I'm going to be from moment to moment mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to learn to be more calm but it's just a part of the experience and it might not ever completely go away that I just kind of mm -hmm. zoom in and out a lot mm -hmm. and I think normalizing people who have mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, and, and we didn't do this to us. So like, you mm -hmm. know, let's normalize this and let's just, mm -hmm. um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the weird stuff, you know. If Beautiful. I, let's talk about all of it. And let's not just bring all of the love and light. Let's bring the shit to. Let's bring all of, all of ourselves to the table. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, that's all I really wanted to, to share. And um, I Thank think... You. You know, we're going to be showing the video for Gentleman. Um, yeah. You know, it's something, you know, we put together yesterday. I was really stressed out about it. I found mm -hmm. a baby bunny that was in need, missing a bunch of fur off of its back end. And I had a choice to stress out over this video or try to help this little bunny. And, in you know, mm -hmm. can't do this Gentleman event and... And, and be stressing and angry. So um, touching. I just let it all go. And, and I think everything's going to work out great. So beautiful. Thank you so much, David. And David, thank you so much also for being vulnerable, for sharing mm. your experience. Mm. I'm so glad you found this healing. It doesn't justify mm. any of the things that happened, but I'm so grateful for you being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. Love you. So love you. Just met you, but I love you. Okay. And I love you. No, but. Let's, let's, let, let's, I saw the smile too. I, I moved on too quickly. I mean, finish taking that in just for one more second. Made me shy. Okay. Saying I love a man in public made me shy. Okay. Should we move on to the song? I think that's the right moment. like to curse but I didn't come here to fight my father taught me there's no wrong way to be right as long as you're a man and you keep God in your sight you can fuck what you want and come home every night oh, my mother said son you're a gentleman Watch what you say and make the right people proud and If you have any questions, just don't have them out loud and Didn't even earn it, it just happened somehow Maybe the fire 
So we'd like to begin a conversation with the panelists here, who I've now met everyone and have been touched intellectually and emotionally by hearing them and hearing their stories. And if I could ask you all to introduce yourself, say some words about who you are, your work, or what you want to offer to the world, what you do offer to the world, something that gives us a feeling and a sense of the people we're about to listen to. Let's start. Rev Bridge, do I call you Rev Bridge? I'm so used to calling you Bridge as a friend. Rev Where, Bridge. Perfectly start? welcome to just call me Bridge. Okay, okay. <laughs> and a respect, um, respect your title is important to me too. Oh, I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, my name is Reverend Bridge Feltis. Mm -hmm. Bridge is short for Bridget. So when you see it on the internet, it looks like Brig, but it's Bridge. <laughs> So um, I am a multi-ordained minister, um, primarily metaphysical minister of, of a minister of metaphysical science, metaphysical mm -hmm. psychologist, and um, mm -hmm. I am the founder of Remember Institute and the Intersection mm -hmm. for Mankind. Mm -hmm. um, these two companies are well. A bit more than companies. One of them is a nonprofit. The Intersection for Mankind is a nonprofit. Um, our intentions are to promote the idea that art, science, technology, and spirituality should be collaborative rather than oppositional to each other. Um, and along that vein, we teach Hermeticism. Um, mm -hmm. We also teach arcane and esoteric sciences mm -hmm. um, and overlapping them into thought technologies and various forms of philosophy that are meant to help us to reintegrate those four disciplines. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else to tell you? I'm a mother. I have a 25 mm. year old son, mm -hmm. um, which defines me in many ways, defines my work in many ways. This work that I'm doing is, uh, you know, there's that mission statement that I just described, but it really is about anti-oppression. It's about dismantling the way that we've been taught to think about those four disciplines. And yeah. uh, so that we can be more integrated in our everyday lives. It affects mm -hmm. everything that we think of these things as separate. Mm -hmm. um, and my son is my motivator. Mm. I would like to have a world that's safer for him, mm -hmm. that is not so uh, antagonistic towards mm -hmm. brown-skinned young men. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's who I am. Mm. I, I'm also oh. a musician as well. Mm -hmm. so I have a real affinity for mm. artists and music. So. Um, listening to Soren's song today really mm -hmm. warmed my heart, and I'm excited to be here. Happy to be here mm -hmm. with all of you. Mm -hmm. Welcome, and thank you for all you share. I watch you on social media and your fierce spirit, also, that cuts through some BS. Uh, I'm pulling. And... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to keep doing it. <laughs> <But someone's... laughs> I've been watching. I, I, you're right. I don't have to. I choose to. Okay. There you and go. <laughs> um, it isn't always easy. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. I'm a mother and, you know, it, it's, there's something about motherhood that mm -hmm. has me be mm -hmm. more direct and more um, to the point and yeah. not interested in a lot of the superficial petty stuff that's going on around us that takes us away from distract, it's distracting us from yeah. what's really happening. So, mm. yeah. Great, great to have you here. Thank you. Jordan, can I open the space for you? Mm -hmm. Sure, thanks, David. Um, hey everyone, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Jordan Masiangelo and um, my experience is I'm a survivor of childhood sexual abuse and um, 
uh, sex trafficking as a young teen and uh, early adult. Um, and just to mm -hmm. keep that all very brief, um, you know, I spent most of my teens in my early childhood enduring that trauma <clears throat> and coping with that trauma, um, battling drug addiction, uh, family dynamics, poverty, uh, um, mm -hmm. engaging in sex work and self-harm and, and <clears throat> really um, mm -hmm. hitting my bottom, to use the cliche, but um, mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to begin my own healing and recovery uh, at a fairly young age and considering um, a lot of men mm -hmm. uh, who are um, have some type of sexual victimization history um, you know it's it's more typical to, to come out with it and start your, their healing much later in life and I was still in my early 20s mm -hmm. um, so when I began that journey um, the first thing I discovered was that healing and community was what works mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I attended, one of the first big steps in my own uh, journey was attending one of Men Healing's uh, recovery retreats. They have these, this weekend of recovery mm -hmm. program uh, mm -hmm. where, you can, where you get together with other uh, male survivors of sexual victimization. And um, it was that community that allowed me to meet other folks that were like me and to actually take those steps um, forward. Uh, to continue mm -hmm. on healing. And that was, oh, 16 years ago now. Um, I've been working as an advocate and a consultant and a peer support person for male survivors and with male survivors for over a decade now. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have turned all my experiences of trauma into my job. Uh, yeah. And uh, I've worked with all kinds of agencies and organizations and uh, mm -hmm. efforts across uh, can I'm Canadian originally. Um, I now live in South Florida, but um, I've worked all across Canada and the US um, helping spread awareness and helping other men uh, not feel so isolated. Yeah. Um, and all that work eventually brought me back to Men Healing, where I now serve as a creative director. So it's been like a full, a full uh, circle yeah. kind of thing for me, where the very first big step I took in my own healing was at this retreat with men healing and 12 years later I'm now the creative director of that same organization Amazing. Uh, so it's been it's been it's been a journey and it's been I've mm -hmm. been very grateful for it um, and at men healing we are a national nonprofit um, we're dedicated to helping provide accessible mm -hmm. help resources and community for mm -hmm male and male identifying yeah. survivors of sexual victimization. Um, we're really sort of grassroots, out of the box, mm -hmm. healing and community oriented uh, mm. uh, organization. We do tons of really great, innovative um, projects and out of the box work. And um, <clears throat> we do speak out projects. We're very big on storytelling. And, and um, we have found over the past few years that that's what is engaging other male survivors. You know, you can read stats and all that kind of stuff till the cows come home. Um, uh, but for male survivors of sexual victimization, it's hard to get a lot of them moving. But when they yeah. see those stories, when they hear those stories, when they can put a face mm -hmm. on those stories, then they're like, damn, I can do this too. So, and we've discovered that that's really working. And we are, we have ran with that. So a lot of our work is community, like, getting, um, bringing survived male survivors together in those communities and storytelling mm -hmm. and showing that as much as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and on behalf of Men Healing, we are, we're very proud to partner with uh, Soren on this project because mm -hmm. this is what we do, so. Mm -hmm. Thanks for doing the work of what looks like to me organizing. I'm not sure if there's other people doing that, but it looks like it's you're a solo act on, on that. And I just wanted to say what a privilege it is to learn from you. And I know you haven't sat and taught me a lot, but I'm open to learning because you have, a, I'm going to call it authority. That's a dangerous word. But authority meaning you author a certain experience from what you've been through and bring it out in a way that says here, I can put it on the table. And that's a huge gift. Um, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. It's been, you know, it's been a while. Speak about it. Yeah, you're welcome.
Thank you. It's important in this whole territory, right? Where we need all kinds of intelligences and some of the deepest intelligence is what I've been through and where I've been should be coupled with science and research and all kinds of things and communities so that we're, so that the mainstream world doesn't marginalize the intelligence of people who've come through mm -hmm. something with that and the healing that comes from saying, and now I'm going to make a life path out of what I learned from myself. That's enormous. So, yeah. Anyway, thank, thank you, Jordan. The root. Although you said call you roots, so I, um, I'm still being formal yet. I, we don't know each other very well. <laughs> That's fine. That's mm. fine. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah. well, greetings, everybody. Um, I am Daru McGregor. I'm glad you were all here tonight um, to take part in this mm -hmm. event and listen to that amazing song mm -hmm. by my brother Soren. Um, yeah, I just. Every time I hear that song, it just it just brings me someplace, and um, the words are 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 powerful um, and not complex. It's very simple, and it's just right to the point. You know, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. fuck what you want and go home every night. It, it doesn't get any more straight to the point than that, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I am Darut McGregor. I am a father, a husband, grandfather. Uh, to a mm -hmm. beautiful, amazing being named Stella. Um, I have three amazing children, Kim, Amina, and Amari, uh, who are all young adults now, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing to me. Uh, mm -hmm. I am an MC and a songwriter um, for a group called Wadada, the Love Movement. Um, and uh, we've been putting out music for uh, over five years. Um, went from mm -hmm. like a, a punk uh hip-hop um mm -hmm. live band um by into more now you know it's more back to my hip-hop roots and it's more uh, produced but it's definitely has like it's as if you know east forest and pete rock got together you know um i don't know if anybody knows east forest but <laughs> if you can imagine you know like a very yoga ish very folky kind of vibe you know with you know bells and bowls but some hard beats and bass lines and some powerful mm -hmm. lyrics and um, mm -hmm. that's what the dot of the love mm -hmm. um, movement is and a lot of our music um revolves around psychedelics and um my partner and myself's journey through psychedelics and how that has affected and changed our lives and mm -hmm. it's really psychedelics that had brought me into men's work um mm -hmm. me having a very powerful experience about 15 years ago um that shifted my whole perspective on the communion between men and mm -hmm. uh, me having two men take care of me um mm -hmm. in the, one of my most vulnerable um absolute vulnerable moments that I've had in my life um, and then have them take care of me, hold me, bring me back mm. um, and basically nurture me. And it just made me realize that mm. I needed more of this in my life. And it made me wonder why don't we see this more often with men? Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. I realized, you know, we've got this barrier, right? There's, um, you know, like mm -hmm. the unspoken homophobia that, or, mm -hmm. or spoken out loud homophobia. Mm -hmm. um that goes on um mm -hmm. that kind of prohibits men from having certain interactions um mm -hmm. and so after that i was really driven into wanting to do more men's work and to really find more communion mm -hmm. communion with men and um mm -hmm. i became a co-organizer for a group called awakening men um we put on two amazing men's retreats um in upstate new york um um for uh first one i think we had 80 men um we had 50 mm -hmm. men and we went on a 30 um, um, and we felt like the 30 was having a better container where we could really get a chance to really get to know each other, um, mm -hmm. really connect and really work on some of the tools that we were going on over that weekend. Mm -hmm. And following those weekends, I then formed um, the DMMC, which is the Divine Masculine Medicine Circle. And that mm -hmm. is just a way for men to continue to connect. Um, that's a group that I have on WhatsApp. And I've mm -hmm. been promoting that message um, throughout my Instagram mm -hmm. page, which is just a message of true love. Mm -hmm. and, and for men to really start to open up their heart and to drop their shields 
and yeah. to recognize that they are worthy of love, right? They're not just worthy of anger. They're not just yeah. worthy of um, being vilified. Um, they're not just worthy of being shot or they're not just worthy mm. of many of the other things that men that look like me go through, but they're also very much worthy of being fucking loved. Mm. And I have to stress that because sometimes people don't understand the power of that word, you know, and that's why my group is called the love movement, because this is there is no movement without love. Mm -hmm. um, there is nothing that we're going to accomplish without love. This entire conversation and the reason why we're all here is because of love is because mm -hmm. we want people to realize and understand that they are they deserve it. Mm -hmm. There is no. I would be more lovable if, like, we've got to cancel that whole concept, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Within this, within love, there is no if, right? Mm -hmm. You're a lovable if, and, and this is something that's difficult, right? Because we like to think of love as the beautiful, bright, and rosy, and all that other good shit. But love can be hard, because when I say everybody's worthy of love, I mean everybody's worthy of love. Right, so that's a difficult pill to swallow. It's a difficult mm -hmm. pill for me to swallow. Um, mm -hmm. But even the most people, even the people that are doing some of the most wicked hurt on this planet, some of that comes from wicked hurt that was done to them. And it's this repetition cycle that mm -hmm. keeps going on until somebody gives mm -hmm. them some damn love. It ain't gonna stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's time for us to really recognize the power of those four letters. Mm -hmm. Mm. and and what we can do with mm. those four letters by opening our heart and mm. so my role i feel mm. is to show men how you can open your heart yeah. and that there's nothing wrong with opening your heart mm -hmm. that you can still be tough and strong and all that good mm. shit with an open heart mm -hmm. you know and and leaving this place alone because you know this is like the seed of patriarchy it's all up in here it's in the head you know, patriarchy does not reside in the heart. <laughs> let me let's let y'all know that, you know, there ain't no love in that shit, you know? <laughs> so we need to get out of our headspace and the stories that we've been creating in this space mm -hmm. and dive into our heart so that we can now create a new story and start mm -hmm. to find connection with, mm -hmm. com with community. Mm -hmm. and, and so I work very hard in co-creating community mm -hmm. um, with um, men of all races um, mm -hmm. and whoever identifies as a male um, so that we can start to have these conversations mm -hmm. and, and start to create these connections mm -hmm. and start to see the fact that we've been living in a place mm -hmm. of separation for so long that it, we don't even understand what it's like to come together. Mm -hmm. So let's, mm -hmm. let's move away from that whole concept of separation because mm -hmm. that's been the big lie that we've been all under, that we need to mm -hmm. stay separate. Mm -hmm. And that separation has caused us to not see the similarities and not mm -hmm. be able to truly see ourselves because mm -hmm. we're even separate from ourselves, mm -hmm. which is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yes, I am, I am Darut <laughs> McGregor. Um, I hold space. Um, I, I hold space for men. Um, I'm definitely a practitioner in this space and, and trying to bring men into the world of psychedelics where they can also open their art to a place mm -hmm. that they haven't opened it before mm -hmm. and be able to shed some of this external false reality to really see who they are. Mm. Um, I hope that working with all of you, we can do something awesome together. Mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. What a generous spirit you have I'm just taking you in. And... Mm. Give thanks. Yeah. Wow. Honored, brother, to have you here. Yeah. Mm. I want to talk to each one of you for like an hour or so, but then I'm, I was given an agenda, unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Courtney, you want to say some words about yourself? Welcome. Glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Hi, David. Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. huh. I'm yeah. like trembling. This has been so powerful already from the time we jumped on to the pre-call, the the um, the mm. video, and I already heard the song, but then it just hit in this really powerful way. And I'm mm. thinking about my own healing journey and even just being a part of this today and sharing and having a voice here with you is another layer 
-hmm. of healing for me. Um, so I'm coming through this channel. Um, Soren asked me here uh, about talking about spiritual abuse. And so I'm also a survivor of spiritual abuse and took that experience and went through a tremendous transformation healing and thought turned me into a clinician, helping other people traverse these rocky waters and to find um, some whole wholeness and healing in their journey of recognizing what had occurred and how to move through that. And then an additional layer is that I went back to school again and got my doctorate in transpersonal psychology. And so um, my research was all on spiritual abuse as well. And so I'm coming to this work with this layered feeling of like being a survivor and then being a, a midwife of sorts, helping other people go through the process. And then also coming at it academically and researching and having this experience of all of those things still ultimately being somehow really interconnected with my healing mm -hmm. and understanding that as I'm in the, the channel of receiving or giving, or I'm, I'm, I'm all of those things are happening. And I'm feeling that so powerfully tonight. Like this is an embodied recognition of when, what happens when we arrive together and um, show, show up in our honesty and in our vulnerability. And I was really touched with Soren earlier when they were saying, I'm not sure what's going to come out of my mouth sometimes when I'm speaking. <laughs> I resonate with that a lot. I, was, I didn't know what was going to be coming out of, out of here. Um, and um, so, yeah, that's, that's mm. a big part of, of why I'm here um, is to speak about this channel for, for spiritual abuse. And mm -hmm. one of the, the really major things I think, and we'll, we'll probably talk more later, but in, in terms of my, my journey and what I think is important is that the methods that I use now are the methods that I use to, to heal. And one was doing a lot of somatic work, like really processing through my body. And the other was group work, being in a community, because most of this abuse happens communally and to come and have a reparative experience or to have this network mm -hmm. or a, a larger holding for the processing is mm -hmm. something that I'm completely passionate about. And so, and I'm, again, that's a little bit of what's happening right here or a lot bit of what's happening right here is that there's like a generous and, and vast field that um, an inner energy field or, or a container that it's held in. And so I offer group work, I offer dyadic work, I do, you know, one on one sessions with people. Um, I'm a teacher, I'm a wife, I have an incredible husband, I'm a daughter, um, I'm a, I'm a musician, we'll say, I like to, <laughs> to, to butter around. I'm a lifelong student. Um, and I am someone who likes to float in the ocean. And mm. I'm, I'm actually here in Aruba right now on a, on a trip. <laughs> joining making you. us all jealous now. <laughs> <laughs> I just left the ocean a little while ago to come here to, to be with you. And um, mm. yeah, and I don't know what how much more I should say right now, but I think one piece that's really important and one of the reasons why I also wanted to be here to support this frame, but also part of the, the whole reason that... Um, I went back to school and that my dissertation was very specific on spiritual abuses because spiritual abuse is not recognized as its own form of abuse. Mm -hmm. It's conflated with a whole bunch of other types. Not that every other type is not completely wor mm -hmm. like worthy, but again, it's kind of like what you were saying earlier, David, about this is a space to talk about this and spiritual abuse is its own form of abuse. And it's what happens is not being spoken about enough when I went to do my research, people were clamoring to speak with me. They were telling me they were in, you know, underground internet groups and whatnot, because they didn't have a name for what was going on. They were misdiagnosed mm. um, and all kinds of things because they didn't, 
the, the connection to the sacred, the spiritual portion of what happened was not acknowledged and not named. It's conflated with domestic violence, you know, sexual abuse. All of these things are, you know, their own in their own right. But the, the spiritual quality, the connection with the sacred, the connection with God or the divine is what's actually interrupted, destroyed, torn asunder in this process. And that's not spoken about. And so mm -hmm. that's another piece why if anyone hears this, it's like, that's a, it's real and that's the part of it, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, to, and to have that over and over, I'm wanting to say this. And that's part of like, I feel my advocacy of having gone through, mm -hmm. it, through it and now being here to advocate and support and share mm -hmm. that it's a real thing. We just watched this crazy Netflix thing on the, the fundamentalist LDS, the FLDS. Mm -hmm. And even on the little break between the shows, it would say, if you know someone who's been a victim of sexual abuse or domestic violence, please call this number. There's nothing about the spiritual portion. And so that is a huge gap. Mm -hmm. And my research sought to fill that. Mm -hmm. I'm here. My mouth is trying to fill that gap, you know, to share this here. And Soren and I spoke about this together in this really important piece. And mm -hmm. so I, this is also, I guess, part of my introduction because it's become part of me and yeah, part of who yeah. I am, why I'm here. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for doing that work and going into that and naming pieces, the naming of things. And yeah, I've watched your passion and intellectual journey also. It's quite magnificent. And yeah. Thank you. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be somewhat mindful of time. I don't have a good relationship with clocks. You know, I have one over there. It's one of those ones that changes. It's a connect. It's an atomic clock, so it goes to the second, just so I can fight with it. You know, so it it's very specific. It says we have thirty minutes and thirty seven seconds left. So, and I'm like, screw you. And anyway, so, but I'm doing my best on that. But there are a number of questions that I have have or questions or territories I'd love to explore. We'll do our best, and I might try to move us in certain directions a little bit without stepping on toes. And I don't know you well enough, so if I do. Just say, wait a second, Bedrick, I'm not done with this. And then I, I, I will argue with you. No, I'll listen to you. <laughs> um, but the first thing I wanted to, us to focus on is the various approaches, modalities, orientations towards trauma. Because if you track like social media, then there are a number of people say, this is the way you have to do it. And someone, I'm exaggerating it, but some of them say it that way or imply I healed this way. So if, and if you don't do that, then you won't get there. And there's a lot of that kind of orientation. And that worries me that a kind of a fundamentalism sometimes bleeds in because I found an answer and therefore it must be right for everybody. And I'm amen to anybody who's found an answer and please spread it around and anybody who resonates, guide them along. But that concerns me. And I think about, uh, I was thinking about this the other day, Rumi's poem. He says, there are a hundred ways to kneel and kiss the ground. And I start thinking about the intersectionality and the intention of that in this group and the different orientations and peoples and what they might need that looks different that given their history and the understanding. So that said, what does healing look like? How would you tell me if I'm coming to all of you and saying, what, what does it mean to heal? What is that gonna look like when I go through this? How will you take me through? I'll just jump in real quick and just Please jump in. Yeah. I told I told this story to you guys last night, but um, mm -hmm. um I'll tell it again for everyone here. Uh I grew up very sort of traditional rural mm -hmm. um Canadian Catholic giant family in the country. Um <clears throat> so my views of healing, or at least what I thought healing was when I when I even when I began to start my own recovery journey was mm -hmm lying on a therapist's couch, listening to your therapist tell you what to do or what you should do. Um, and I'm not disparaging that at all. I've done that a lot. I did it this morning. Um, but <clears throat> there is so, as I've grown in my own healing journey and my own recovery, I have discovered that there's so much more to healing than sitting on your therapist's couch. Um, for me, traveling, experiencing other cultures, experiencing other people, learning that the world isn't 
out to get me. Um, getting out wow. my bubble that I lived in really ingrained in me that there's a lot more than just me and just what I know. Um, yeah. That was probably the biggest step for me. And mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'll say there was just like, there's one, so at Men Healing, we do these weekends of recovery. I went to one as a participant, not, not working um, as last summer, two summers ago. And we do all, there's all kinds of things that go on at, at these weekends. There's nature walks and art and music and dance and somatic stuff and group therapy and one-on-one -on -one stuff. It's, it's, there's all kinds of stuff. Anyway, that particular weekend, um, we had an art therapist doing a, uh, at the beginning on the Friday, we had to trace our entire bodies on this huge piece of paper. And I remember thinking to myself, this is so silly. I am not into this. Like I'm, but I like, you know, I, I bit the bullet and I, I traced my stupid body on this giant piece of paper. We had to hang it up on the wall in this big room. And so there's all these traces of all the men that were in the retreat. And over the course of the whole weekend, um, we got like an hour or whatever each day to do whatever we wanted to it. There's a whole craft table with like paint and markers and stuff, glue and glitter and all kinds of shit on the, on the art table. And you just take whatever you want and you add to it an hour each day. And I, I remember thinking, there's no way mine's going to be blank at the end of the weekend. I'm not doing this. This is stupid. And by the end of the weekend, mm -hmm. mine was the most beautiful thing I had ever done in my whole life. <laughs> gorgeous it had like this river running down the middle of his body and the sun coming out and it was beautiful and I had every kind of art supply that I could find on the table was glued on there <laughs> really incredible. and you know that really opened my eyes to the, when you're talking about these modalities of healing and what does healing look like yeah and I don't know if you can have a real concrete answer to that because it's so different for so many people and that yeah. depends on who you are what your identity is what culture you grew up in um, where you live, who your family is, that was never something that I would have ever even thought about doing. It's something I didn't want to do when I started doing it, but I kind of stuck to it. And then afterwards, I was like, damn, that was really powerful. Awesome. And mine was the best damn picture in that whole room. I love hearing that. <laughs> and, I it up and I took it on the plane home with me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's incredible. The different mm -hmm. modes of the different ways healing can show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's beautiful. I love hearing you say mine was the best one because in the male world, people take that as a competition, but that's not the spirit you're offering. You're offering a sense of self-pride and celebration. That's a gorgeous spirit to which you're bringing that uh, disclosure in. Yeah. Anybody else, someone else jump in around that? To yeah. So Bridge, as, yeah. a, as a metaphysical minister, I want to interject that mm -hmm. there is for all of us a set of universal truths. And those universal truths are true for all of us. They align with what science tells us. Mm -hmm. They align with all of the five major religions and the esoteric uh, spiritual cultural practices mm -hmm. and from that perspective mm -hmm. there is a, a returning that happens in our healing where we return to the origin truth mm -hmm. the original truths um those things are true for all of us and we get dysregulated or disintegrated through tr through various traumas, including not not just the blatant, explicit ones that we've heard about in this conversation already, but even simple miseducation, um, social agreements that don't align with those truths. Mm -hmm. So, for example, yeah. um, let's just use gravity, for example. Gravity, we know that gravity is, right? Well, if you're somewhere else in the universe, that might not be true. And, um, but on this planet, we have gravity. And so you know what will happen if you drop a, a glass off of a five-story building or a 12-story building, right? You know what's going to happen. 
So if you, if you drop that glass, you know that it's going to break. And that is a, that is a truth, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we know that there, uh, there are polarities. We know that polarities mm-hmm. are not separate things. Mm-hmm. The opposites on a polar plane are not separate. Mm-hmm. They're varying degrees of one thing, right? Mm-hmm. We know this. So if, if we're taught something different from that though, that opposites are separate things, then that is a direct assault on the truth that in our bodies we know, right? So then we're living in a society that teaches us these untruths, which mm-hmm. are constantly attacking the uh, intrinsic ancient knowing within us. Does that, right? does that impact? How does that impact the way? Is that trauma in itself? Is that part of yes. what impacts our ability to quote unquote heal and move forward? How, just say a word. Yeah, I, I call it subtle body energy trauma. Mm-hmm. I, I can oh, remember oh. as a young child um, mm-hmm. in school, I was very smart but I didn't agree with everything I was told. And the response to that was just learn what's in the book, (laughs) memorize it, Mm -hmm. take the test and get a good grade. Right. And we're taught to be this way from a very, very young age. Mm -hmm. We're also taught things like good versus evil in a very uh, black and white, very separatist way. The villains mm-hmm. in our fairy tales, for example. Mm-hmm. Have you ever read a fairy tale that talked about how that person became that? Well, is there is there anything in the fairy tale that tells you why they live out in the woods and not in town with everybody else? Fascinating. Is there, how, why are they so mad? Why are they so jealous? Why are they so uh, violent? There's mm-hmm. nothing in the fairy tale that tells you that part of the story. Fascinating. Just that there's an evil person mm-hmm. and then the, and by the way, they're usually ruddy skin or olive yeah. toned skin, mm-hmm. some kind of physical mm-hmm. disfiguration. They're not pretty. Yeah. <laughs> they're certainly n- not considered beautiful. Yeah. And the, the, uh, the hero mm-hmm. or heroine and the victim are usually, well, the victim's almost always a woman. And the hero is always, almost always a man. Mm-hmm. And in most of those stories, they're white European. The good people are white European. And they yeah. may not call out the culture of the villain, yeah. but the villain is almost always a witch mm-hmm. or some other kind of non-Christian, non-European looking person who's been oh. outcast from society. Yeah. So we're taught these things in ways that are very subtle and those things traumatize us. Oh, we don't want to be ugly. We don't want to be unattractive. So we go to great lengths to be attractive. Oh, well, you know, men should not be uh, ever afraid. So, because then you're not the hero, Mm -hmm. right? So, so these, these kinds of things attack what we, what our systems and, and I'm saying mm-hmm. we, as in your entire system, mm-hmm. your spirit, mind, and body knows mm-hmm. what the truth is. Mm-hmm. And then we forget mm-hmm. because of what we've been taught. Yeah. I'm so, so glad we, you bring in the perspectives, the cultural perspectives, racial perspectives, gender perspectives built into the actual territories and the myths and beliefs that people Not, not just race mm-hmm. and gender, also yeah. ableism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, classism. Classism. All there are divergence, anti-Semitism, all those, all these qualities Absolutely. that come in. Because some of the framework for trauma is you're an individual traumatized by a person. We're seeing it that way. Yes. Too often, at least that's the way it's presented. Anyway, I just want to thank you for, for bringing that in. Yeah. Bridge, can I add to, to what you were just saying? Please. Um, because uh, <laughs> It, the, the fairy tale is a beautiful reference. Um, and the other flip side to the fairy tale is, um, especially for men, is the hero, 
right? Um, now, of course, we're, we're speaking here and we're talking about how majority of the time the hero is the, the male European, but regardless of what your race is, you are read these stories and you want to be the damn hero. Yes. Right? Um, and so, so, so this information is being disseminated to all men, but here's something that I've also recognized too, within this storytelling, there is no story of the hero after he saved the princess or done, like what the hell does the hero do, right? So it's like this instruction to the man, right? Go find somebody, solve the problem, and then what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, what do you do then? Right? Who are you really? Who do you become? Like, what are you supposed to do after you're the hero? And this mm -hmm. is some of the stunted growth and stunted development that happens in men that are chasing mm -hmm. this hero thing um, and not necessarily going on the full hero's journey, but they're going after this character of the hero. Yeah. But that character of the hero has no development after the battle. Mm -hmm. right has no development after he's rescued the princess like there's no they live happily ever after do they really he, he gets to really have like... the princess <laughs> right she's, well, she's she's princess. do they really live happily ever after he don't even know the princess he just met her he don't know her. he <laughs> don't know him you know like, in three what, weeks, what is it like so in three right. weeks be like what's up with you where's so your what heart it, what, what goes on in their house after that yeah. <laughs> exactly. what does it do to the mind of men Mm -hmm. or uh, let's go back to young boys. What does it do to the minds of young boys around their relationship with women that, uh, that story? And, well, you know, when I think, funny. yeah, when I think about fairy tales, I think about Disney because Disney made all those fairy tale movies. And uh, Disney, the first, the first princess in a Disney movie that was not white, was Jasmine in 1992. Mm -hmm. Believe it. <laughs> so up until that point in Western society, only white women were princesses. What does this do to a young boy's mind? Mm -hmm. This is traumatizing. It, we, mm -hmm. we may not think of it as trauma because mm -hmm. it's, it's subtle, it's not, it's not explicit. Yeah. But it's traumatizing mm -hmm. because then this, mm -hmm. yeah, then this young boy goes into the world and this is not what a real woman is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's she's not a damsel in distress. Right. She she's not uh uh mm -hmm. bowing down to him to save her, mm -hmm. you know. You're and, talking and, about the you're talking about the trauma, not of one person smashing another sexually, emotionally, et cetera, but the air we breathe that then creates yes. a culture that says, I'm gonna get along with that particular thing. So it doesn't look like trauma, I just look like I'm doing a good job. Right. And, and, that, and, that and the other thing is that these are all false constructs, right? These are and that's the other part of this, and that's what and that's what's so deep and insidious about this stuff, right? Like even the but like because not every woman needs to be saved, right? They don't. Not every woman is a damsel, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like so it, it's it's sending you out with this whole this yeah. this brainwashing that you must save women, right? Like women can't save themselves, right? Women are not strong enough to defend themselves, well, right? And, even and though also, even though a woman can birth you, right? Totally. Can do the most incredible thing on the planet that no man can do, right? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but mm -hmm. they need you to save them, right? So there's but, but this, also that regular... this, this strength from femininity also and feeling like only masculinity can possess certain things. And it starts to be, it starts to throw this in the face of boys mm -hmm. and girls at an early yeah. age. It starts to force them into these roles, you know, um, that is, that mm -hmm. sticks, yeah. you know? And, and, then, and, and then getting back to what you were saying, David, when it comes time to the healing, and when sometimes that healing comes, they can't even recognize it. Yeah. Because they've, also, they've been taught to only look yeah. for certain things. Yeah. Right? I, I think so, there's also this, this archetype that says mm -hmm. that you, in order to be powerful mm -hmm. as a man, you mm -hmm. must be rich, you must be mm -hmm. physically uh, adept and strong, and you must be, you must be uh, high on the imperialist ladder. Yeah, and it's 
there's this whole alpha male thing, right? That when it was first research, this research was done on wolves. And I don't believe there's ever been research actually done on the alpha phenomenon in men. But a few years ago, it came out that, oh, we made a mistake. The wolves were in captivity that they were studying. Mm -hmm. so, so the whole idea of alpha masculinity, mm -hmm. that, that men must uh, mm -hmm. compete with each other and there must be a superior and an inferior, yeah. was based on behavior observed in captivity. Mm -hmm. Super important. Let's stay with let's stay with that this idea because I was hoping to bring us into the focus on men and we're already moving there. Men's trauma, men's healing, men's stories that are less told often in popular culture. What what's unique to that that you all have learned from your inner experience from working with men? The men need men as elders. These are questions that are around. If I'm a man saying. I'm needing healing. How will you hold me, approach me, offer me? What do you know about me because of my male body psyche that may I may need to know just to speak to the audience about that? I would like to say something about as this is being recognized and, mm -hmm. and spoken about, there needs to be space for the grieving of this. And I think that is one of the hugest pieces of work is coming together and especially for men to be able to do that, to come together and grieve. Part of the, the patriarchal organization is that we get chunked, we get split up and pieced and parted and we're not coming together as a collective. And so we don't get to have our grief witnessed. We don't get to hold one another's grief. And so mm -hmm. I feel like a huge portion of the healing could be done in a communal grieving way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grieving. Another part of how we've been taught masculinity is, is not, men are not supposed to grieve. They're not supposed mm -hmm. to be sad mm -hmm. or, you mm -hmm. know, even express pain or harm. They're supposed to be invincible, right? Mm -hmm. This is, this is what men are taught. And, and so in, in every area of human activity, um, the, the way that men are taught to be in the world, uh, first of all, what is a man? You know, like mm -hmm. you have to start there even. What is a man actually? Mm -hmm. and, and how do you know? If, if you say, um, I identify as, as male or yes. as a man, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, it means something different to every culture, really. Yeah. And, and is that an actual real thing? Or mm -hmm. are we actually talking about varying dynamics of, a, of one thing? It's just a great question. Is it a continuum? Is it varying dynamics? Do we need the category at all? And then something inside me would say, I, I don't know... This is not all of me. I don't know what a, what a man is, but I know I walk around in the world and people treat me that way. Yeah. I yeah. don't know well, if race exists in some way, but I know people treat you a certain yes, way. Yes, yes. But right? we can and talk about And therefore you have to this. deal with that particular dynamic. Yeah. You, but we're, you have we're to address capable. that in your... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're actually more mm -hmm. capable mm -hmm. of thinking dynamically than we know we are. Mm -hmm. we're, we know, if I ask you, what is hot? Mm -hmm. what, what temperature is hot? It's going to be different to you than it is to me. Yeah. But we know that, that we mm -hmm. use the language hot and cold mm -hmm. and we understand what we mean, but we don't necessarily know what each individual person means. Right. But we can have mm -hmm. more dynamicism in the way we think without completely yeah. tossing the words out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm and I think it's understanding that there is a continuum, right? There is a continuum there. There, there are mm -hmm. archetypes, right? There are, and people will gravitate to more than one or one specific. But I think that um, definitions are dangerous things sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and sometimes we need some baseline defining, but mm -hmm. definitions have gotten us into a lot of trouble. 
you know, mm -hmm. um, as we're finding now, right, out now, um, where we're redefining things and shaking off certain definitions now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's important is that people get the opportunity to define themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And so when we when we make statements like what is a man or what is a woman, um, that has to be for the individual to determine. Um, and now you can agree or disagree, but that's not your business because it's not you, it's that person. And I think that we've gotten so caught up in um, these group agreements, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, that across the globe or across mm -hmm. the scope, like this is what it is because we all agree it is. Well, here comes this guy that says, I don't agree. So now what do you do, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the majority rule function doesn't always work. You know, this is in also defining, about it's you know, just about transactional management, right? right. Yeah. It's, it's not really about who you are. It's about mm -hmm. how uh, mm -hmm. the people running a syst systemic culture mm -hmm. can manage that culture of people. Right. And mm -hmm. that's not about your identity at mm -hmm. all. Like who mm -hmm. I am is not just a black woman. I am many things, right? And and at different times, different things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it is very important for right. us to remember that 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 we are mm -hmm. we have so much uh, capacity for expression. Yes. Let me dig down just one more shot on that topic. If I'm a man, I more or less mostly think of myself that way, and I'm have some trauma, family trauma, father trauma, Jewish generational trauma. And I'm gonna to come to, let's say the root or to Jordan and say, you all know something, you hold male containers. Is that the way to say it? Spaces for men. Why should I do that? Why shouldn't I just go to any space? I'm not saying I shouldn't go to any space or I shouldn't go to a woman, but what are you creating that that has a uniqueness that I would, that my male body, I'm maybe in the audience of the people here says, oh, maybe that would be useful for me. Maybe a male space, a space where that's mostly men identify people are there. Why would I do that? Well, I think well, for the same reason well, Jordan, I asked. Well, I'll let Jordan speak because you've been quiet for a minute, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jordan. Jordan. Um, no, I just, I just think that, um, you know, the, the mm -hmm. I think we need to remember that trauma hijacks all of that stuff right yes. so if you're it hijacks that template especially if the person's young you know in my in speaking for myself yeah i, I identify as gay um <clears throat> and that my whatever i thought masculinity was uh was hijacked when i was molested by a mm. family when i was 13 years old yeah. and <clears throat> uh, mm -hmm. that alters that template that was supposed to be blank for me to fill in. Mm -hmm. It was filled in for me by somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that changes the, tra the trajectory of all that stuff. So it's hard for, it was hard for me to de define what masculinity even meant for me because I was told that I was gay. And so I was not, I was told by the perpetrator, you're gay, that's why you like this. Mm -hmm. So now I'm fighting that because mm -hmm. So I spend most of my most of my teen and early uh, adulthood fighting what I've been told mm -hmm. and not understanding any of that. And the only way, and, I, and what you're saying, David, about a male space, you know, yeah. that's what we try to hold um, at Men Healing is it's not about you don't need a penis to come to to uh, any of the stuff we do. It's we just like to tell people it is a masculine space. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can identify with masculinity, um, you are welcome. And mm -hmm. I think I think men in general, um, it's I've never met somebody who went to one of our weekends or came into like a community of men who have similar situations. Be like, I hate that now. Almost a hundred percent of the time, they're like, "Damn, this is where I need to be," and mm -hmm. it's because the world has told us that we are independent. We need to be able to be alone. We need to yeah. take care of everybody else. We need mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we've been shoved into this box, just like the world shoved women into a box, and just like mm -hmm. shoved every other in between gender in a box. It's like, um, if you identify as male, I do identify as, as a cis male and um, a gay cis male. And I was just shoved into this gay cis box. 
-hmm. and that's not who I am. You know, I, when I was growing up, I had such a hard time figuring, I was not gay enough to be with the gay guys, but I wasn't straight mm -hmm. enough to be with the straight guys. And it's like, why does that even matter? Mm -hmm. Like when you, you know, Jordan, when you describe your organization, you describe it as being for people who identify as. Mm -hmm. When I when we uh, market my course, heal thyself. Mm -hmm. In the language, it's uh, for people racialized as white. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between white people and saying people racialized it as white. When I say people racialized as white, it is clear that I'm speaking about a societal construct, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, because I understand actually the, the history of how the concept of whiteness came about. It's only mm -hmm. been a couple hundred years. Mm -hmm. And people from different cultures have been added to it and taken away yeah. <laughs> within that time. So uh, I say racialized as white mm -hmm. to keep the attention where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. that, that we're not talking about what you are. We're talking about how you've been categorized or labeled in a society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, a deep, it's a deep point and a deep question around this territory. Yeah. Well, it's emancipating. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and to go back to what you were saying, David, and yeah, yeah, please. Um, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, like if what I was, why, why come to a men's circle? Why go to a men's retreat? Because yeah. your ass needs to. That's why. <laughs> um, I mean, and 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 really because there is like like what Jordan just said, like there's no one that's ever come to a circle or a retreat and was like, I need to leave. This is not where I need to be. Mm -hmm. Um you automatically realize that mm -hmm. there's been something that's been missing. Mm -hmm. And um, when you do get into these spaces, you know, you actually start to realize that you're not going through things alone. Yeah. Um, we, oh, walk through this, we walk through this world um, with all these billions of people. And sometimes we feel very lonely. <laughs> we're the only ones feeling, I'm the only one that feels like this. No one understands me. Mm -hmm. And then you go to one of these spaces and then you say that and then there's five guys like, no, nah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've been mm -hmm. exactly where you are. That happened to me yesterday. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, yeah. shoot, whoa, wait mm -hmm. a minute. And then you're like, well, this guy doesn't even look like me. How could he mm -hmm. possibly be? And then, oh, wow, mm -hmm. we are all feeling this. We're, we're, we've got different, mm -hmm. even varieties of this same experience. Yes. Yes. Coming together into these spaces is really pivotal for us to, to break that, 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 that break the the um the ice to put the mm -hmm. shield down you know the the you know the hard gaze that you might give to another man when you walk down the street rather than a warm one you know it's like this sense of competition rather than a sense of compassion um when you come into these spaces it allows you to drop some of your shit mm -hmm. and also pick up some of your shit mm -hmm. and actually own it you know, mm -hmm. um, because you actually now are in a place where you're getting real reflection now. Mm -hmm. And it's and sometimes it's even more powerful in a place where there are strangers because you might not get authentic reflection from your from your social group mm -hmm. because they might have been accustomed to you being mm -hmm. however you are in your traumatized mm -hmm. state, in their own traumatized state. So they don't even know how to even offer you this, the support and assistance you need or give you that reflection. Now you mm -hmm. go meet some man you've never met in your life. And you mm -hmm. share with him some shit. And he's like, oh, my God, Darut, the same thing is going on with me. And you're like, what? How's this stranger going through this? But my best friend is it, you know, or my guy down the block is it, right? Because we're not allowing these things to happen, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're, we're not allowing that, that share. We, we would rather mm -hmm. talk about, you know, the video or sports or, yeah. or whatever, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, anything other than what we are feeling right now, mm -hmm. other than... Mm -hmm bro, I really, I'm having a hard day. Mm -hmm. Something is, yeah. mm, man, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm feeling really insecure. Like, what, you're feeling insecure? It's mm -hmm. like, but yeah, you know, and for us to have those genuine conversations, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. that when you come into these spaces, those genuine conversations happen and you walk mm -hmm. out of the room feeling a hundred pounds lighter and you also feel embraced, 
you know yeah. i can tell i want to come i want to come i can tell you like, <laughs> said, like what is healing feels like you know yeah. an experience at a men's group is you know losing my my uncle-in-law that was like my father-in-law that introduced the book king warrior magician lover that i recommend to any man or woman um watching tonight um king warrior magician lover um, by Gillette and Moore, I think it's Rob, Roger Gillette, Robert Gillette, or Roger Moore. Um, and he gave me this book, and that book is what really opened my mind to this men's work and to understanding mm -hmm. this concept of the stunted boy energy that so many men are walking around with. Like we see mm -hmm. a lot of grown bodies walking around the planet, but the, a lot of them are still little boys in those grown bodies. They have still not gone into any kind of mature, mature masculine. It's still a very mm -hmm. immature masculine that's roaming the planet. Mm -hmm. And for a large, a large part of them, it's not their fault. It's just that's what society has caused. This is what society has bred. It's bred these immature masculine men. Yeah. And it's like, until you get the opportunity to step into a space like I did, I was feeling broken. Mm. I had just lost this figure of a man. And like, he meant so much to my wife and the family, every, it was a shambles. I didn't even want to leave mm. to mm. go to this weekend. And I walk into this group of men and they had just finished doing a ritual on grief. Mm -hmm. And I step into the circle and I just started bawling, mm -hmm. telling them what happened because why I was there and why I was late because I just lost my, my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. And I had 60 men embrace me. It was the most incredible hug I've had in my life. Do you know what oh. that feels like mm -hmm. when you were feeling like you just lost everything and then 60 powerful, strong, big, loving men that don't even know you show mm -hmm. you their heart and give you all this mm -hmm. vulnerability and all this love. That's healing. That's Beautiful. healing in such a big way for me that, mm -hmm. that so many of us have never had this opportunity. Yeah. You know, and, and so I mm -hmm. think it's so important for us to really change. Yeah conversation yeah. and show men that there's spaces for them to actually be themselves you can Ruth, go thank you so much I, I know i'm stepping on your toe a tiny little I'm, bit no, i'm sorry i know yeah. i can be long only because oh. only because the clock is fighting with me yeah. and I'm, and but that's not about you it's just you, blame the clock please <laughs> no i'm just trying, but can i hold you there for a moment is that absolutely. okay no absolutely. okay because yeah because it's a good place to it's a impassioned place and there's much so much more I would love to talk about and go deep, deep into experiences. But Jordan, I think I'm four minutes and 38 seconds over what I'm supposed to be moderating us to. And uh, and, and we we're going to do a close of asking each person for some a suggestion or recommendation or a resource. Uh, so I have to ask you, Jordan, because you are, you're over my head. I'm, I'm yeah. my boss, so to speak, in the moment. <laughs> um, wrong word, but you know what I mean? Is that something we should we could go into? Do we make the time to do that? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, you know, Sorry, but I'd have to just check in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The idea is just um, for each of us to just give some concrete a resource. For me, obviously, I'm going to shout out Men Healing. It's menhealing.org. We do a lot of great stuff. There's a lot of projects getting involved in. Yeah. Um, we have yeah. weekends of recovery program. We make mm -hmm. them accessible as we can now. They're pay what you can instead of like a you know, yeah. big key. we have speak out project, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. online support groups. We've got all kinds of, we've got an entire video library of survivor stories and they're about healing. They're not about like describing mm -hmm. trauma. They're about yeah. describing their healing. Um, so check us out, check us, check men healing out, check our YouTube. It's, we can be such a great resource and people Thanks. should find us. Thanks. Thanks. And again, I just want to apologize to all of you and to the audience that I'm kind of put a clip on on the movement because there's an energy that I just want to keep following and flowing and and uh there's always a place you have to stop but there's there's more just to say that or hold that but somebody else want to say something about a resource one suggestion resource yourself a book i don't know something you think um, would three be things i'll give you three things um one um you are worthy of love and don't ever forget that um uh two um, please, if you're a man, get King Warrior Magician Lover and, and start your journey of introspection. Um, stop using these two eyes to look out and let's start going in. Um, that's where we've got to start. And mm -hmm. the third thing I would give you is a simple, um, a simple exercise because we do need to 
really even start self-regulating and some of us may be dealing with different trauma and be feeling anxious anxiety and we get in situations and we don't know what to do and i would just always recommend three breaths deep breath with a four count so you're breathing in one two three four holding it for four one two three four breathing out for four one two three four and repeat that three in, in threes do it in a cycle of three and then i would also to end look over your shoulder and then stop and that completes the cycle and why i tell you to look over your shoulder is that that is the cue to your mind that you are not being chased you can slow you can cut off the fight or flight mechanism there is nothing attacking you if you were being attacked you wouldn't be able to look over your shoulders like that and it's a way to calm your body regulate your body bring mm -hmm. down your anxiety and your Beautiful. anxiousness Thank and you. so i recommend those three things and one more thing start a gratitude practice okay. every day <laughs> three things you're grateful for as soon as you get up as soon as you get up don't look at your phone don't turn mm -hmm. on the tv three things you're grateful for it will change your day Beautiful. do that for at least three months Beautiful. I love you all. I want to invite everybody to uh, check out Remember Institute, www.rememberinstitute.com. We have courses. Um, follow me on Facebook, Bridge Feltus, B-R-I-G Feltus, F-E-L-T-U-S. Um, martial arts, specifically Tai Chi, Qigong, uh, Hermeticism, the seven Hermetic principles changed my life. Um, and then question everything. This idea that men can't do certain things because they're not masculine things um, was created to profit someone. There are people profiting off of your not going to men's circle. There are people profiting off of your fear of expressing something that society says is, is feminine. Mm -hmm. Somebody's profiting off of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, question, question yes. your own fears. Thank you. Remember oh. Institute, question. Courtney. Yeah, so um, I do have a, I have a, a therapy group starting in the fall. I'll be oh, great. taking, um, I have a form on my website, drcourtneystratton.com. It's specifically oriented around somatic um, <clears throat> practices and working with spiritual and really healing from spiritual and religious Great. abuse. So I'll start interviewing people um, in July mm -hmm. for that group that starts in the fall. So you can find that on my mm -hmm. website. Um, did I say my website? DrCourtneyStratton.com. Okay. Dr. <laughs> I wasn't Courtney. sure what I said. Yeah. Yeah. And as I'm sitting here, like I, I wanted to share something earlier. I'm thinking about this this book on grief that I've recommended to so many people and something is feeling like I really want to share this resource. I think there'll be a PDF going out. I want to I want to add that to the PDF, Jordan, before you send it out. But it's by Francis Weller and it's called The Wild Edge of Sorrow. And it is a book on grief and grieving and it gives you some processing mm -hmm. for those things. And then on, on just on the note of spiritual abuse, it isolates you. It makes you feel ashamed as most abuse experiences mm -hmm. happen, especially if you don't have a name or a frame for it. And mm -hmm helping each other recognize that, knowing that it is a real thing um, mm -hmm. and starting to be able to talk about it is a huge, huge, huge thing. In my mm -hmm. research that I did, everyone told me mm -hmm. at the end, just being able to speak about this and have a compassionate ear, have a compassionate witness, someone who believes me was yeah. incredibly powerful. And also Dude. that started a lot of people's healing journey. So, mm -hmm. um, you. you know, naming, framing and believing Thank you. Naming, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Drew, did you want to say something? I, your thing is off. Uh, I just I just forgot. I didn't tell anybody oh. how to contact me. So um, yeah, uh, you can definitely um, keep in touch with me on Instagram, Negus73, N-E-G-U-S 73 at Instagram, or mm -hmm. Darut McGregor on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and my website is wadadathelovemovement.com. That's W A. W A D A D A Wadada Wadada the Love Movement.com. 
Um, that's where you can get in touch with me as well mm -hmm. and, um, and find my music. But mm -hmm. definitely through Instagram is where you can connect with me to find out more about, you know, men's circles mm -hmm. and, you know, let's just do some work together. Mm -hmm. Let's do this, guys. Beautiful. Beautiful. I, I, I'm going to add one thing. I'm trying to keep keep my, my time job, so to speak. Um, but if people want to contact me, that Facebook's probably the easiest thing for, to say in one word. So David Bedrick, B-E-D-R-I-C-K, like Bedrock. Um, but the one suggestion I want to make for people who are feeling hurt, traumatized, abused, abused leads to trauma, is in your own story, thinking and telling, add this one piece if you haven't already. Who was there or wasn't there? What did they see and not see? What did the people who you told do? Because there's a, people would say there's a victim and perpetrator. I don't always love those words, but it's a good enough word. Somebody, a hurt, a hurt person and somebody who's hurt them. And then there's a person or a culture or a church or a patriarchy or a community or a nation um, that sees, that witnesses. And the way that, person or group witnesses becomes the way we start looking at ourselves you know it's a big part of the healing is getting that internalization uh clear soren we're bringing you back in and uh i want to thank the the panelists courtney and bridge and darut and jordan thank you so much for your hearts and your passion and your work and your brilliance and your depth of going into things from your own personal experience and your and your work, it's, it's a special privilege to sit with you. And um, then next time I wanna be on the other side, so I'm gonna make somebody else do this job. So, <laughs> no, but thank you so much. Soren, bringing you back in for the inspiration, the air, the spirit that brought us together. And um, I'm gonna give you the floor. Anything you wanna bring forward, say uh, it's yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I just, I, first of all, I want to thank all of you so much for, for doing this, for, um, you know, I had this, this kind of wacky idea instead of a regular video premiere to do something, um, you know, that facilitated a conversation I wish I could have heard a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that's important to me, I think, to any of us that are healing, um, that we can feel kind of like we're able to you know, give a resource that we needed that wasn't there for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what everybody here is doing. And I'm so grateful for that. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you all for being here. Um, I think there's one email will go out to anyone that registered with all of our information. Okay. Um, and I think it will give you an option if you want to learn more from anyone, um, then, then you can let us know that and we'll reach out to you. Um, but if there is anybody that's watching or that's watching this later on or whatever that needs that needed to hear this conversation and needs to have a little more of a conversation if you feel yourself getting really angry or getting having a big reaction to it that means you need to stop and look your programming's kicking in and that means there's something you don't want to hear that you need to hear. That's how I learned. Anytime I got irrationally angry, it meant I needed to listen to someone else. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you guys all, everybody that you know stopped in and, and was a part of this. I'm just so grateful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'll have my information on there as well. You can follow me, soandsong.com. Um, and you know, any support is is always, always. Mm -hmm. Is, yeah, I have a new Patreon I just started. I'm very bad at that aspect of this and I'm trying to get better. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I have a new album coming out. The first half is finished. Second half is getting finished. Just needs a little more money. So feel free to help me out. Thank you so help much. Help him out. Help him out. He's an artist um, doing some good work. Yeah, and, this uh, was just the experience for me was healing. I hope it was for all of you. Mm -hmm. and, and whatever else comes out of it, you know, is, is just icing, is a blessing. Um, yeah. I had a healing experience listening to all of you and being a part of this. Um, mm -hmm. And the journey getting from the kooky idea to tonight was mm -hmm. a, a, a lesson in either stressing out or being gentle. And mm -hmm. I chose to be gentle 
most of the time not all of it mm. but most of it so um thank you guys so much for being mm. here thank you everybody that came out have a great lots of love everybody good night good day good morning all right everybody have a blessed night thank you sorry what if the shadow is really the shade